I've been walking across London, past Big Ben, Westminster Abbey, to the school where I was a pupil from the age of 13 to 17, Westminster School, which is next to the Abbey, and where I learnt chemistry. And I've come to the building where I did learn chemistry. It's now the art department. And the only part that is left and looks like it did when I was here is this room, which is the prep room where the technician, Mr Watts, used to work. And I didn't have lessons in here, though I did, I think, on occasion do some glass blowing here. But you can see there's still the fume cupboard and the old blackboard, but it's now got something about art on it. And if you look out of the window, you can see the Houses of Parliament, in fact, the House of Lords. I didn't expect to find anything here that I recognised. Next door, there's the big lab, which I learnt in from the age of 15 onwards, and that has all changed. All the benches have gone and so on, but it's still recognisable. But this looks remarkably unchanged. In fact, their drawers down there labelled burettes. Burettes are for doing titrations. I have no idea what gas burettes are. What I also brought for the state of nostalgia was my first chemistry practical book. It's quite funny to look at the first experiments. I don't know what the first experiments that you did, but mine on the 5th of October 1961, when I was 13, was burning of magnesium. I didn't do very well. I got six out of ten. There's this experiment in which I was measuring the gases dissolved in water. The idea is that you boiled the water in here and the gases went into this tube here and you measure the volume of gas. And it was a disaster. It said the flask was now heated for about five minutes with a Bunsen burner and then another one was used until the water boiled. This it did violently and the violent oscillation set up in the delivery tube broke the eudiometer tube above the surface of the water wrecking the experiment. Do you remember that? I mean, yes. Do you remember it happening? I remember it. I was, I was devastated. And I got six out of ten again. Then we burnt some quite exciting things. So here is the combustion of sodium in oxygen. So this is deflagrating spoon. And there's sodium burning in oxygen. Seems a slightly mad experiment because you have water here, but you have a lump of sodium just above the water. It feels really quite strange. I've never dreamt when I was 13 or 14 coming back here. After all, 65 is very old, almost dead. And, and so I never imagined coming back here and certainly wouldn't imagine coming back here as a professor of chemistry, even less as Foreign Secretary of the Royal Society. But it's really fun. I really like the chemistry labs. And I knew as much as the chemistry teacher, so I was never very frightened in chemistry lessons. I'm Tony Roberts, a retired doctor now, and um, I taught Martin chemistry 50 years ago. Well, perhaps Martin taught me chemistry 50 years ago, um, and he's the only pupil I've kept in touch with over the last 50 years. Other lessons were dreadful. Maths. I nearly failed maths in one year I got 13% I think in the exam but here for chemistry lab I felt at home so I have good feelings here perhaps when we go to other places I'm giving the lecture in the hall where I took all my exams then I might get butterflies <laughs> quite a strange feeling, but I'm quite excited. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure to welcome back Professor Martin Polyakov. He has always been enthusiastic about chemistry, yes. Yes, it was a del delight to teach him. I'm particularly pleased to see my former chemistry teacher, Tony Roberts, who is sitting there. Perhaps you wave your hand, Sophie. And, um, who I think is probably the only person here, or one of the few people here, who remembered me as a pupil. He's always been a very easy person to know, a very sociable person, an easy person to get on with. We always got on well together. And so with his hand. And I suspect he didn't move his hand when he spoke. 
But I suppose the final point, which still worries me slightly, is that when I was a schoolboy and I went to the Tizard lectures, there were famous scientists giving these lectures in dark suits, and I didn't really understand why I was there. And there's just a hope that perhaps the present students will feel differently. Thank you.